magnetic poles are on the move according to detailed measurements. The North Atlantic Pole is moving towards Asia, while the South Magnetic Pole is leaving Antarctica and heading in the direction of Australia. This movement is referred to as a field reversal, which happens on average every few hundred thousand years. The Earth's magnetic field surrounds the planet like an invisible force, protecting all of us from harmful solar radiation. The field is continuously changing. It is believed there have been at least several hundred global magnetic reversals in the Earth's history. So when can we expect the next one to occur? Here is what is known. Geomagnetic reversals occur a few times every million years on average. However, the interval between reversals is very irregular and can range up to tens of millions of years. There can also be temporary and incomplete reversals, known as events and excursions, in which the magnetic poles move away from the geographic poles, perhaps even crossing the equator, before returning back to their original locations. The last full reversal, the Brunhez Moriyama, occurred around 780,000 years ago. A temporary reversal, the Lasham a geomagnetic event occurred around 41,000 years ago. It lasted less than 1,000 years, while the actual change of polarity lasted around 250 years. The alteration in the magnetic field during a reversal will weaken its shielding effect, allowing heightened levels of radiation on and above the Earth's surface. Were this to happen today, the increase in charged particles reaching the Earth would result in increased risks for satellites, for aviation, and for ground-based electrical infrastructure. In 2003, the so-called Halloween storm caused local electricity grid blackouts in Sweden, required the rerouting of flights to avoid communication blackout, and radiation risk, and disrupted satellites and communication systems. But this storm was minor in comparison with other storms of the recent past, such as the 1859 Carrington Superstorm, which caused auroras as far south as the Caribbean. In terms of life on Earth and the direct impact of reversal on our species, we cannot definitely predict what will happen as modern humans did not exist at the time of the last full reversal. Several studies have tried to link past reversals with mass extinction, suggesting some reversals and episodes of extended volcanism could be driven by a common cause. We do know that many animal species have some form of magnetoreception that enables them to sense the Earth's magnetic field. They may use this to assist in long-distance navigation during migration. But it's unclear what impact a reversal might have on such species. The Earth's magnetic field is generated within the liquid core of our planet by the slow churning of molten iron. Like the atmosphere and oceans, the way in which it moves is governed by the laws of physics. But predicting how the Earth's core reacts is difficult because it is buried beneath 3,000 kilometers of rock and therefore the observations are indirect. Orbiting satellites actually measure how the magnetic field is changing while they then provide insight into how the liquid core is moving. The recent discovery of a jet stream within the core highlights our evolving ingenuity and increasing ability to measure and infer the dynamics of the core. So get yourself prepared for a geomagnetic superstorm that will happen as the ongoing reversal kicks into gear. Back in the spring of the year 2007, a dire warning was presented to the mainstream media and to the George W. Bush administration 
that the sun would be entering into a period of hibernation that would last for decades, resulting in an historic decline in energy output and a long-term decline in the Earth's temperatures. The warning was presented by Mr. John L. Casey, one of America's most successful climate change researchers and climate prediction experts, who is a leading advocate for a national and international plan to prepare for the coming climate change epoch. In November of 2014, the Space and Research Science Corporation announced an important set of climate change predictions for the next few decades. According to analysis of the most reliable solar activity trends and climate models based on a relational cycle theory for the coming years, what had been predicted is shown here. On October 7, 2017, after more than 10 years of informing the public about his dire predictions for the planet, John Casey was compelled to end his epic crusade due to complications of a debilitating stroke. As he indicated in a final goodbye to the public, which he had served, he wished everyone the best as we enter into a time of climate uncertainty associated with historic earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. As our sun now enters into a time of hibernation and inactivity, we must seriously examine whether the predictions that John Casey warned of more than a decade ago are actually coming to fruition by what we see developing across the world today. Let's take a look at some of the most recent happenings from across the world that may provide some credibility to John Casey's predictions of another decades-long cold climate epic for the planet. A rare and heavy snowfall swept over Paris on February 7th, bringing local transit to a standstill and causing havoc across the region. Between 6 and 8 inches of snow fell over the capital city, while temperatures plunged to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, making this the heaviest snowfall event for Paris in the past 32 years. During the event, nearly 2,000 motorists were stranded on a highway southeast of Paris, forcing many of them to continue on foot, and the evacuations of at least 900 stranded people were conducted. The weather event had also forced Eiffel Tower to close its gates. Weather models are suggesting a very high probability of a rare North Pole weather phenomenon called sudden stratospheric warming, which is taking place later this month and bringing prolonged bitterly cold temperatures to the UK and parts of Europe. There is a clear indication of an imminent split in the polar vortex, currently located over central western Greenland. The polar vortex is expected to become well developed by mid-February. The process of vortex splitting is accompanied by sudden stratospheric warming, whereby temperatures in the stratosphere rise. This warming can then extend downward through the depth of the atmosphere and result in an increased risk of blocking, which in winter raises the chance of widespread cold conditions developing. A sudden stratospheric warming is an event in which the polar vortex of westerly winds in the winter hemisphere slows down or even reverses direction over the course of a few days. The change is accompanied by a rise of stratospheric temperatures. Immediately following the stratospheric warming, the high-altitude winds reverse to flow eastward instead of their usual westward flow. The eastward winds progress down through the atmosphere and weaken the jet stream, often giving easterly winds near the surface and resulting in dramatic reductions in temperatures in Europe. An exceptional cold wave swept across Morocco, North Africa, blanketing the country with extremely rare snow for the second time this winter and for the second time in the past 50 years. 
The latest event comes just 15 days after a huge snowfall had caused unprecedented road conditions across the country, shutting down 3,100 miles of highway. Some southern regions describe the conditions as those experienced during blizzards. Total accumulation of as much as 75 inches were reported across various regions of southern Morocco and as much as 111 inches at higher elevation weather facilities. The government has launched what they described as an exceptional mobilization in response to the consequences of the cold wave and heavy snow which has caused significant damage to the affected areas. One of the worst snowstorms in modern history swept across a large swath of Japan the first week of February. In northwestern Japan, record snowfall brought transit to a standstill and trapped people in 1,500 vehicles for more than two days. Here is a glimpse at the massive snowstorm that hit along the Sea of Japan coast on February the 7th. In Moscow, record-breaking snow and freezing rain wreaked havoc across the Russian capital. The snowstorm was so severe that meteorologists dubbed the storm as the Arctic Invasion, describing the event as the snowfall of the century. Half of Moscow's monthly precipitation fell within a 24-hour period, causing the downing of 2,000 trees across the city. The event was the heaviest one-day snowfall in Moscow since records began. The unprecedented winter weather that is sweeping across much of the northern hemisphere shines a light on the predictions of John Casey. But some areas are actually feeling the opposite effect, basking in unseasonably warm and dry conditions. In California, a persistent pattern of west coast ridging, or high atmospheric pressure, is happening off the coast, as seen in this satellite image, which has an uncanny resemblance to the formation of a hurricane. New record high temperatures are being felt across the state from 77 degrees in San Francisco to 81 in Los Angeles during the first week of February. Further to the south in the warm Pacific waters, tropical cyclone Gita is on a path of destruction where it has already done extensive damage to the island of Samoa and American Samoa on February 10th and 11th. On February 12th, the storm struck the island of Tonga as a Category 4 tropical cyclone with maximum sustained winds of 144 miles per hour and gusts of 173 miles per hour, leaving the entire island without power. This satellite image shows a massive eye bearing down on Tonga in what is now considered as the most powerful cyclone to ever strike the island kingdom of Tonga Tapu. The storm is now entering into Fijian territory where it is expected to strengthen further before hitting the Fiji Islands. Within days of the Great American Eclipse of August 2017, a phenomenon began in which the ocean waters were seen retreating from the shoreline of prominent beaches and harboring inlets. It became a worldwide phenomenon in which just about every explanation was given, from lunar eclipses 
to upper atmospheric disturbances. But the public wasn't buying these reasons, because, as it turns out, the phenomenon is continuing on a regular basis, and it has been for the past six months. It seems now that the scientific community has exhausted its list of explanations that they had hoped would somehow resonate with the public. In the first week of February, the sea at one of the most popular beaches in India retreated some 100 meters, or about 328 feet, about the size of a football field. The retreat was so extreme that it exposed all of the rocky bottom that would otherwise be hidden by the seawater. Residents indicated that this was an extremely abnormal occurrence, but local officials dismissed it as a weather phenomenon. So, as you can see, there is a pattern of denial happening here in order to quell the concerns of a bewildered public. In what is being attributed to the super blue moon, an exceptional low tide has drained the lagoon of Venice, Italy, leaving gondolas stranded on dried up canal banks. However, this is the third year in which Venice, Italy has experienced record low water levels, up to 60 centimeters lower than average. Two years ago, it was 70 centimeters lower, the lowest ever recorded in city data. What is so strange about this phenomenon is not the fact that it is being blamed on a super blue moon, but rather this event has become a big surprise because recent studies have indicated that Venice, Italy has been sinking over the past few years, in which scenario the city should be flooding, as shown in this 2012 image, rather than drying up as shown in the winter of 2018. In addition to the low tide phenomena, which has been ongoing for several years, the city has been experiencing unusually cold winter weather and a lack of rain all of which are contributing to the unusual happening in the city of Venice, Italy in the past few years. Much further to the west in Mexico, on the Baja Peninsula, the sea has also disappeared in an extraordinary event that is also being attributed to the super blue moon. The comparison image from Playa Belandra is a stark reminder of how bizarre this phenomena has become, and more importantly, what it may be telling us about a sudden shift or a movement of the Earth's continental plates. If you have spent some time observing this strange phenomenon that is ongoing from around the world in recent months, you may have noticed that the tidal retreat, which actually began in South America, in late August, early September of 2017, is now more prevalent above the equator in the Northern Hemisphere. Therefore, it is now becoming more of a worldwide phenomenon. If this were a common occurrence brought on by explainable circumstances, then the public would not be as baffled or awestruck by these events as they would otherwise appear to be. As these events progress with no clear indication as to why they are happening, we will continue to monitor their occurrence, as it is our interpretation that there is much more to the story than what is being told to an inquisitive public. As you have heard me say on many occasions, the sky is suddenly changing and the signs are being manifest before us. At the beginning of February, a rare sight took place in the sky over Winnipeg, southern Manitoba province in Canada in a spectacle of moondog anomalies. This took place just one day after another uncommon occurrence of a super blue moon eclipse. Shortly thereafter, when the sky brightened, the sundog anomalies became the focal point. On February 6th, a grand spectacle lit up the sky over Alberta, Canada. Notice how it 
resembles the flicker of a candle. In Richmond, Virginia, a remarkable roll cloud was photographed on February 5th. Normally, these clouds would appear in advance of an approaching storm, but this formation just happened to be part of a weakening front, which then stalled out, leaving behind an incredible sight. And so, my friends, remember to keep looking to the sky for all your answers, where all things shall be known by those who have eyes to see.